every now and then I stumble across unexpected thoughts. One of them came up while I was working on my runway tutorial. What Aleph is trying to do, shouldn't that be possible with other AI platforms too? So I kept digging, and during a few test runs, I unearthed something inside Midjourney, a feature quietly hidden in the external image editor. I'm talking about retexture. It's a powerful tool if you know how to use it. The videos you're seeing right now may look like they were made with Runway's video-to-video -video feature, but they were created entirely in Midjourney. I actually tested retexture a while ago. Back then, let's be honest, it felt more like an experiment. The results were shaky at best, but something has clearly changed. It looks like one of the recent updates quietly improved the feature. So I thought, let's take that as a reason to show what retexture can now do. In Midjourney, you can now switch from one scene to the next, almost seamlessly. A Native American turns into a Viking, a Viking into an orc, an orc into a cartoon, and on it goes. You see where this is heading. The possibilities are almost limitless. To show you how controllable this feature really is and how consistent the results can be, let me start with a simple row of images. On the far left, the original, some random guy on his way to work. Nothing special. Just the kind of picture anyone could take with their phone. Natural light. No drama. But that's not enough for me. I want to turn this person into something else. A Northman, a desert lord, an adventurer, or a union general. But if the background doesn't match, it all falls apart. It ends up looking like a costume party. One big joke. So I used retexture to build an entire visual series, all based on that one source image. Pay close attention to the visual consistency within each campaign. If I say jungle and adventurer, that's exactly what I get. So how does that work? The key is something I call prompt richness. And by that, I mean four essential factors, or ingredients if you like. Ingredient one, you need a base image, could be a phone photo or something generated with AI. Let's call this the origin. Ingredient two, start your prompt by describing how the scene should change. Always use the same structure. Something like change the modern setting into a jungle in the style of, or change the modern setting into a desert planet in the style of. That's your setting. Ingredient three, describe your character as precisely as possible. Since retexture doesn't support omni-reference, you have to spell it all out Every wrinkle, every skin tone, the eyes, the mouth, the hair, the clothes, everything. Sounds like a lot of work? It is. And most people would ask, can I even write that kind of detail? The honest answer, no. But here's the shortcut. Use ChatGPT. Upload your character image and ask for a prompt, compatible, high detail description. That's your character prompt. Ingredient four is the mood. Technically optional but crucial if you want a specific look. Retexture lets you include style references. This fourth ingredient doesn't have to match the setting itself. You're not showing the jungle, for example. You're just telling the AI. This is the kind of light, color, and atmosphere I want. Let me show you how this comes together. The origin, this friendly man, the setting, a desert planet, the character prompt, that same friendly man, described in detail, and the mood, shaped by a photo of a driver, used to define the light and colour. This is the result. Isn't that pretty great? Let's take a step back for a moment. The original challenge was this, how do you visually transform a base scene into multiple new scenes, using only mid-journey? That's exactly what I'll show you now, in a video sequence that, in many ways, feels similar to what Runway Aleph is aiming for. One thing I've noticed about Aleph, it sometimes gets a bit soft. It morphs. Mid-journey, in contrast, tends to deliver sharper, more detailed frames. Not perfect, but definitely cleaner. Is it 100% accurate? No, the motion between the clips isn't one-to-one, -one, but the overall interpretation is consistent. And even with the best prompts, there's always a bit of creative drift. That's both the beauty and the curse of AI platforms. 
there are plenty of ways to use this feature. Let's start with example one. You might recognize this temple image from my Aleph tutorial. Here's the video again. But is that enough? Not really. What if we reimagine it post earthquake? Or as a steel structure like the Eiffel Tower? Or during a hurricane? And what if we turn those into video using the exact same movement path? All of it without runway LF. Sounds pretty cool, right? Example two. The base image in the bottom left shows a stepped waterfall. The camera is positioned just above the waterline, capturing the spray, the flow, and the mist. Now watch what happens when I say, change the water to lava. That's the top left result. Change the water to gold. Now we're looking at the top right. And if I change the entire landscape, change the setting into an alpine valley, that gives us the bottom right. Example three is a bit more playful. It starts with a very striking face, the tribal chief of a proud First Nations people, bottom left. Now let's get creative. Change to a petrified person gives us the top left. Change to a soccer player results in the top right. And one of my personal favorites, change to a knitted person, bottom right. It's fun and surprisingly effective. One thing I noticed while working with Retexture. Stylized results like illustrations, comic art, or hand-drawn images can work, as long as the prompt aligns well with solid training data. But they don't always hit the mark on the first try. It often takes a few iterations. Photorealistic results, in my experience, are more reliable. Not perfect, but easier to steer. So does it always work as consistently as I'm showing here? Yes and no. The real game changer is the prompt. I went through what felt like a thousand test runs. I tried everything. From generic prompts I assumed would be good enough to highly specific ones with and without image prompts or style references. At one point I even doubled up using the same image for both the prompt input and the style reference. And finally I went all in. A fully detailed character prompt plus a dedicated image for style. A quick word about style references. They are basically the DNA of the output. That's why the quality of the reference image really matters. If the colors are great, but the image itself is low res, blurry, or full of artifacts, Mid Journey takes that as a signal. It thinks that's what you want. This became crystal clear to me when I used a washed out screenshot from an old 1980s film just for color reference. Prompt was solid, but every result came back soft, faded, and kind of smeared. At first I thought, is Midjourney just unable to create crisp, high quality images? No, it absolutely can. The problem was me, or more precisely, the prompt I gave it. Bad input leads to bad output. That's all it is. Now, if you use a flawed image on purpose, because you want that effect, then of course the result makes sense. Just know what you're feeding the system. So how does it actually work? Retexture is part of the external image editor. As the name suggests, it lets you edit not just mid-journey images, but also your own, from your phone or any other source. I've already made a full tutorial about that editor. Links in the description. But here's the short version. There are several ways to open the external image editor. First method, Click Edit on the left-hand menu, then select Edit New Image, and upload your file using the brown field, or just drag and drop it directly into your browser. Done. You're in. Second method, click on Create first, then hover over any image, right-click, and choose More from the drop-down menu. On the right side, more options appear. Select Editor. That's the internal editor. To get to Retexture, click Open in Edit tab at the bottom right. That brings you to the right place. There's also a third way, but it takes one extra click. So let's skip that for now. Once you're in the editor, ignore the standard Edit tab. What we need is Retexture. You'll find it just next to Edit at the top left. Click it. Your selected image should already be loaded, so you can start right away. Now enter your prompt into the input field at the top. For example, change to a Viking with a black tattoo. 
That's all you need if you just want to transform a single image, without needing consistency across a series. Mid-journey always creates four variations per job. The chances are good that one of them works. Click through the four thumbnails to enlarge them. The red frame shows which image is currently selected. If none of them fit, just run the prompt again. Or try a different one, like change the person into a stone statue, or change the person into an orc. Once you find one you like, click Upscale to Gallery at the bottom right. Otherwise, the result won't show up in your Create section. If you want to create a coherent series of images, especially with the same person, your prompt needs to be absolutely precise. It should combine the two key elements we already talked about, setting and character. To lock in the desired color tone, use a style reference image. Just drag it into the input field. This is the one I'm using here. Image prompts also play a crucial role at this point. They directly affect how accurate your results are. You can see the difference clearly in this comparison. If you've already created mood boards, you can activate them using the little P icon at the top. That too will shape the outcome in a noticeable way. But don't forget, turn off personalization when you're done, otherwise the model keeps applying it where you may not want it. Also important, don't overload the prompt with too many styles or visual references. The AI gets confused. I recommend sticking to no more than two input elements. And if those references contradict each other, the model won't know what to do with it. And neither should you expect clean results. So, this was my attempt to put the spotlight back on the retexture feature. In my opinion, it delivers great results, as long as you've got a clear concept in mind. One quick side note here. I recently heard that Seedance Pro now supports multi-shot video generation, meaning you can create a series of connected actions from a single image. That sounds like the next step forward. I'll definitely take a closer look. That's it for this tutorial. I hope you enjoyed it. Thank you very much for listening. See you soon. Your channel, AI, now you know.